Alright, what is going on you guys? It's your boy White Album here. Welcome back to some more Tsukihime, a piece of blue glass moon. Woo! You guys already know, I'm excited for this game and man, can I just say real quick how fucking just gorgeous this, this uh, like menu is? Oh, it's amazing. It's, I love it. It's, it's so sick. It's so sick. And it actually kind of makes me wonder because, um, I just platinumed Witch on the Holy Night. And when you platinum it, uh, the, um, it completely, like, changed the way the menu looks. So I wonder if that's, if they do the same thing here for Tsukihime. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out, uh, soon enough. I say soon enough, like, I, I mean, I just started the damn game. But here we go, man. Enough blabbering. Let's just get into it, man. You already know how I feel about this game. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. So... Uh, last episode, we just had Alko and Shiki meet up for the first time. You know, we got a little, we got a little baby Shiki. He's just sitting there, in the hospital, see weird things. Then he meets, he meets Alko. So, and now this is, I believe, a few years later, from what I remember. All right, here we go. <clears throat> the tracks take a sudden dive, leaving the surface behind. Casting an artificial light across the tunnel walls, the train makes its way through the darkness. The car creaks around me. Man-made lights pass by at a regular at regular intervals. I also did um, do a couple sound adjustments, so the music shouldn't be too loud. I, I don't know if it was loud for you guys. It was definitely loud for me, so I, I did I did adjust that. The vibration through the seat lulls me into reflection on this short little journey. <clears throat> it's early 6.33 a.m. 30 minutes have come and gone since I've gotten on this train that's how long it's been since I said goodbye to the people who took care of me all this time how I react to this probably says a lot about me as a person I'm sure some people might feel sad and wish they could have stayed longer others would accept it without a second thought I wonder which side I fall on I realize after a moment that I don't really feel neat uh, either. I'm the only one sitting on the train on the eight-seater. Uh, what? I'm the only one sitting on the eight-seater bench. The seats in front of me are empty. There are only a couple of other people on the train, including a sleepy man in a suit on the bench next to mine and a woman standing in front of the door. It may be early, but it feels particularly empty today. The noise from outside is strangely muted. But maybe I'm just lost in thought. The train vaguely reminds me of a spaceship traveling through the darkness of outer space. No sound can reach out here. The only things here are my stupid daydreams, the sound of my heart beating, and my memories from an hour ago. Hold on real quick. Sorry, I had to clear my throat there. It came like a bolt from the blue. Uh, Makihisa Tono has died. Shiki Tono is to return to the Tono household immediately. I believe that's the head of the family, the father, I believe. The first contact I had from my family in seven years, and that's how it goes. The Tono's family word is final. I'm still a student, and they pay for all my expenses. But choosing to return to the mansion today instead of yesterday was my one act of defiance. I just wanted to stay a little longer at the home where I'd spent so much of my life. It was all I could do for the family that took me in and treated me like their own. <clears throat> Thank you for breakfast. It was delicious. I finished my meal and leave the table before the sun even rises. After taking one final glance at my room, I clasped my hands together and thanks. It's not much for all the time I stayed here, but I don't want to leave anything unsaid. I led a happy life here. That's what I want to carry away uh, with me. Keiko saw me off alone as I left the Arima household. I asked to leave quietly without waking the others. <clears throat> yeah, the Arimas are, um... What's that little bitch's name again? Uh, Miyako. It's Miyako's family. Oh, they're right there, Miyako. <laughs> <clears throat> It's basically Miyako's family. Uh, thank you for everything. Give my regards to Dad and Miyako for me. 
Seven years. Okay, uh, this is not in, to the story. I don't know how they handle the story, but I know in Melty Blood, I kind of hate the way they, they have it set in Melty Blood, where it's like, Miyako's like trying to find Shiki and shit like that, and then like whenever Shiki sees her, he acts like he doesn't know her. It's like, motherfucker, you spent how seven years, it says right here with that family. You're just like, who are you again? <laughs> like, what the fuck? It's kind of annoying, but that's more of like a because I mean to be fair, that game is set before Tsukihime. So a little lore knowledge for you. Melty Blood type Lumina is set before this game. Which again doesn't make sense, but it 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 does. I don't because of the character interactions, it's it, it's a whole thing. But here we go. Enough of my ranting there, if you want to call it that. <laughs> Seven years. The woman who had acted as my mother in that time looked terribly sad. I never once thought I'd see her like this. Life may be hard at the Tona Mansion, but you'll be okay, understand? Don't overdo it. Make sure to look after your health first and foremost. I take her words of encouragement to heart. My time spent with them was peaceful. I just hope I didn't cause the Armas too much trouble during my time with them. It's been seven years. I've had plenty of time to recover. I'm a lot sturdier than I look, you know. Yes, you're right. The Tonos are quite the unusual family, but you're not the one. Uh, but you're not one to let that bother you. You've always been a strong boy. She smiles through her sadness, and I smile back. I'm happy that she still considers me to be her child. I think you're giving me a little too much credit. Well, I should get going. Take care, Mom. Goodbye, Shiki. Take care. Keiko knows that I won't be coming back. At least I fucking visit once in a while. I, I don't know. That just that just might be me. <laughs> you know, you can't spend... <clears throat> God damn it. I don't know why my voice is like... Filled with phlegm or something like that. Um, You spent seven years with this family. You're not going to like be like, Hey, it's been a while. How have you guys been? You know? Or some shit like that. You know, you just be like, Okay, they are no longer part of my life. <laughs> she sends me off with tears in the corners of her eyes. That was just 40 minutes ago. That moment marked the end of my previous life. And the start of my new one. The view at sight shifts slowly. We must have crossed the river that separates the suburban Yashirogi and arrived to the city of Suya. The train begins to return uh, its return climb to the surface. I can feel the gentle incline. Bright light shines through, piercing my eyes, which had grown accustomed to the artificial dimness of the subway. Look at the lovely city. The train sweeps towards the city. The majority of its inhabitants are still asleep. Outside, the air is chilly. A fall morning in the month of October, the heat of summer is little more than a faint memory now. I watched the same view nearly every day for a year, uh, for, year uh, for a year and a half now. But this is the last time I'll be taking this train to school. Memories of the past seven years rush by like the scenery outside the window. I survived a terrible injury that would have ha that, that, that would have killed most ten-year-olds. I met the woman that would become my master, my mentor in life. I went to uh, I went to live with the Arya my family, and now I'm halfway through my second year. The thing Master feared might happen when we parted never came to pass, and as long as I have these glasses on, I don't have to worry about seeing those lines again. And so, Shiki Tono has led an ordinary, though at times difficult, life. That all changes today. There's nothing major. Uh, there's nothing major like feeling like I don't belong or anything like that. I just don't feel right going back to the ways things were before. Having led a normal life these past few years, the Tonos family way of doing things just seemed like a pain, or at least more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> Uh, besides, I can't even imagine living in a mansion bigger than my entire school. I'm surprised I was able to handle it when I was a child. The thought of going back to that old-fashioned way of life is daunting to say the least. Hold on, let me 
and make sure that my my phone is uh just realize that yeah cool good 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 right. sorry about that that was a more of a me thing there the train stops at a large station for a few minutes the local line i'm taking has to wait for the express to pass the platform is empty usually i would expect to see morning commuters in suits on their way to work but it's particularly quiet today the express passes by on the neighboring rails Thank you for your patience. The next stop is an announcement I've heard hundreds of times plays. The door closes with a hiss of air. I see that there are four stations left to Soya Station, the station where my school. <laughs> ah, wait, wait! Hey, there she is. Got second best girl. <laughs> yeah, I said it. She's second best girl. You know who's first. Come on now. Whew. That was a close one. I'd have lost my head if I wasn't careful. A girl wearing my school's uniform slips through the automatic doors as they close. Her ribbon is green, so she must be a third year. I feel like I've seen her before. Also, I haven't decided which route I wanted to take. I don't know if I want to do Arcoids first or CLs first. So, well, we're just going to... We're just going to go with whatever the game takes me, so. <laughs> the bag she's holding in her hands must contain things for her club activities. Our eyes met for a moment. The girl continues to stare at me. Just when I notice that she... Uh, what? Just when I notice that she's walked closer. Uh, good morning. Sorry about all that. Yeah. Uh, 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 no, um, if anything, I'm sorry for staring. The way she smiles has me apologizing almost by reflex. Uh, please, if it's my fault for causing such a big scene in the first place. As a third year, I should be setting a better example. I guess you weren't lying when you said you weren't a morning person. The girl laughs lightly. I'm distracted by her laughter and... Come on, it's me. We just met last week, don't you remember? Lady, he's about to forget his that his foster family that he had for seven years of course he's not going to remember you last week <laughs> but we all know who this is also fun fact CL means blue in French I learned that one through Overwatch funny enough of all things because Widowmaker a French character has an outfit that's blue I was like what the hell does that mean so I looked it up oh it means blue <laughs> and obviously her eyes and hair are blue <laughs> oh shit wrong thing um, CL? In an instant, my memories jolted awake. I knew she felt familiar. I've crossed paths with her a number of times. And now, and now that I think I'm uh, what? Now that I think about it, there's probably not a person in the whole school who doesn't know CL. Soya High's most revered third year. Happy to offer advice to any distraught first year. Eager to solve the woes of any troubled second year. And quick to save underclassmen from the ire of the third years. Some students call her the true student council president, considering most people rely on her over the teachers or or our actual student council. She even helped with, with uh, she even helped me with something just last week. Man. How how out of it am I? Seal is right about uh, Seal is right about how I hate mornings, but thinking about returning home for the first time in seven years must be killing my brain cells. I oh here we go we finally got our first decision. The first of many decisions. Okay. Oh oh god let's not start 
I, uh, sorry, I'm talking to myself there. I, I, I felt a sneeze coming on, man. If you've seen my Rakugaki playthrough, man, you know for some reason I had a, just a sneeze fest. I don't know why. Or my recent one, at least. Uh, all right, I, one, can't think of a single thing to say. Two, think of something to ask. Three, take the opportunity to admire what's in front of me. Oh, okay, Shigi, you, you slide dog, you Shigi. I see you, bro, I see you, I see you. Uh, let's go with, let's go to, let's do two. A question pops into my mind. Why is she on the train so early? Uh, hey, uh, how come you're heading to school so early? I didn't think you were in any club. Oh. I didn't think you were in any clubs. Uh, truth be told, I actually just got done with some volunteer work. Remember how the student council was recruiting people for park cleanup? That's what I was just doing. Ah, now it all makes sense. Steel's always running around helping out somebody or another. It was just a quick half hour early morning job. Everyone else went uh, back home after, but that seemed like a hassle, so I'm heading straight to school. Damn, th I, that could not be me, bro. Let's see, 6 o'clock, he got up, got on the train, and if that's early, she probably got up at like 5 to clean up a fucking park. That's fine and all, hey. But I'm not going to school after that. I'm not even, I'm not joking. I'll clean up the park. I'm not going to school, bro. I'll call out, all right? But look, I, look, I already helped at the park, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm not going to school, bro. Just have some, just have the teachers, you know, send me someone with my with my homework. I'll, I'll fucking figure it out. Her bag clatters. I had assumed it was full of equipment, but it must be cleaning stuff. It's actually a gun. Oh ho! You want to see what's inside, don't you? I didn't think you'd be so bold to try and expect my belongings, oh, lady. You th just threw the bag at my feet. I, I'm just, I, that was just instinctually me, uh, me looking down. <laughs> she draws closer and looks into my eyes. Her face is so close to mine that I could smell her. Oh, okay. <laughs> Flustered, I can't figure out where to look. No, it's not like that. I just thought maybe you had a collapsible broom or a rake or something. It's not every day you see one of those. A broom? Ah, you want to see my multi-purpose hedge clippers? Or head shears? Speaking of that, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be fucking insane. What a segue. What a fucking segue. And yes, that was me making a perverted joke there. All right. Come by the tea ceremony club after school. I'd love to have you. Faced with such a heartfelt smile, I end up blushing. I like to say something clever or witty, but all I can manage is a simple yes. Promise? Just between you and me. I bought way too many snacks with the club funds. Uh, they're about to expire, so I could do with someone to help me polish them off. Damn, they're just gonna fucking just shove just cakes and pastries in their mouth. So this guy. Yeah, take I about uh, I see. Well, if I had the time, I'd be happy to drop by. Though, does this make me a cat? Being tempted by food and all? No. Food is delicious, okay? <laughs> you can tempt me with food. Alright, I don't give a damn. Biel's warm smile makes me comfortable enough to crack a joke. She adjusts the green ribbon around her neck. Hmm, I'd say you're more of a dog. 
That's I dislike cats, really. I prefer, uh, I much prefer dogs. Smart, sincere, and loyal to the end. For reasons I don't quite understand, she seems to feel strongly about this. She's like, you're a dog. <laughs> As we're both heading to the same place, we continue to chat. We talk about last week's midterms. We wonder why the sports festival has been reduced to a one-day event. We complain about the cafeteria always serving the same things. After getting into a heated discussion about the plan to restrict phones at school, we tire each other out, sigh in unison, and change the subject. We laugh as we trade opinions on the movies we've seen recently. I forgot what years this said in the like 2000s, right? I want to say. Would make sense because I believe Alco is in her 30s. Uh. Yeah, I think she's like 30 in this storyline. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't. I don't know. Uh, 15 minutes go by in a flash. It's easy talking with her. She is, after all, incredibly popular among everyone. I don't want this to end, but we only have a few minutes left before we get to Soya Station. So I bring up something else to talk about. But... Oh, I forgot about this chick, yeah. Huh, could you two keep it down? Who the fuck are you? Oh, <laughs> what if CL said that? That'd be crazy, dog. She would've got bumped up to first girl there, dude. To first waifu. Alright, we've forgotten where we were. Cell and I bow our heads an apology. Hmm. You do meet her on later. Again, I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but I, I did play quite a bit of this. I uh, guess that's what we get. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I must have been laughing too loud. With that, our conversation comes to a halt. The friendly cheer that filled the air just moments ago has vanished. It quickly, it's quickly replaced by familiar si uh, city silence, that cold space in which everyone is a stranger. The train pulls into Soya Station. It's just before 7 a.m. I left for school a bit early today, so the town hasn't quite woken up yet. It's quiet right now, but in about an hour, it'll be bustling with traffic and commuters. There aren't many people around today either. It feels like this town is waking up later, later these days. I wonder if everyone's been staying up late. It's like, yeah, yesterday was a Sunday, of course. <laughs> As CL shares this odd observation, I notice how heavy her back looks. Uh, hey, do you want help carrying your stuff to school? Huh? Oh, no, I'm fine, thank you. I had to make a stop on the way, so I'll see you later. Smiles a goodbye and waves as she runs off. Her lift legs carry her so swiftly, I, I almost expect a comical whoosh. Not to be outdone, I feel an urge to start running too, but there's really no reason for me to hurry. I probably shouldn't be running anyway, considering my condition. I start walking toward uh, school at my usual pace. But just as I, uh, but just as I set off... The girl from before emerges from the ticket gates. She passes by briskly, slowing down only to share a few choice words. You're, you're as bird-brained as you look. What a pain. He's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and with that, she stalks away. He's like... Yeah, right there. I, I'm struck dumb by the rudeness. He's like, who the fuck is this person, bro? <laughs> it seems I made an enemy. Oh, he's gonna fight her? Okay. He doesn't. I mean, that'd be crazy if he did. Wouldn't put him past him, though. 
I'm saying that in like melty blood terms. <laughs> I should be careful the next time I have a conversation on a train. I guess I said something that upset her. Even so. <laughs> ah, middle schoolers nowadays sure are something. It was a regular hit and run scolding. We're on our way to school. I make my way to school. My step's heavier than usual. It's just something about... Uh, what? It's just about seven when the main entrance of the school comes to a view. Students hurry to their gate to go to their club activities. They must be trying to make the most of their time before homeroom starts at eight. So yeah... Uh, municipals? I said that high school. An old school celebrating 40 years since its funding, our founding, our funding. <laughs> our college admission rate isn't bad. Our clubs do fine, and the rules aren't particularly strict. Uh, it's as normal as a school you can find. The only complaint male students has is that their uniforms are too old-fashioned, but the school doesn't pay much attention to it. As for the girls, the uniforms were changed three years ago. Apparently, the school is worried about keeping the older sailor uniforms, which will lead to the drop in enrollment. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Something feels out of place in my usual watch at school. Things feel busier than usual. Pale-faced teacher rushed to the faculty room. A black car I've never seen before is parked in the parking lot. There's a chill in the air. Images flashes through my mind. A sparsely attended funeral. The cold, uh, the cold black of a hearse. I sigh my own dark thoughts, trying to shake off the uneasy uh, feeling growing inside me. I head for the home. Uh, what? I head for the classroom. They're gonna explain why it's like this. So, uh, there's no one else here yet. I sit in my chair and kill time until homeroom begins. More people begin to fi uh, to fill the room as I get in some studying. Hello. Morning. I managed to survive practice somehow. Huh? Well, you're early, Tono. I was sure we'd be the first ones here. Ah, it must be that volunteer thing. Damn. Was that today? I think I was supposed to go to that. The students of 2C get along with uh, well compared to the other classes. We're pretty casual with each other before t uh, taking our seats. I catch up with classmates who have just uh, ended their club activities. We go through your typical laundry list of things, from last night's ancient news to stuff that happened just uh, just minutes ago at school. We we're just talking to pass the time, but this is an important morning ritual of ours. A warm-up exercise to start off the day. We'd only tire ourselves out if we tried to have real conversations about everything, especially in this age of information. The mood in the classroom changes suddenly. Lively chatter uh, dies down to a whisper. Hosuke? I'm just kidding, it's not. Um, all right, losers, out of the way. It's too early to deal with this shit. Crude remarks you wouldn't expect to hear among the uh, uh, otherwise harmonious bunch cut through the tranquility. I don't even need to turn around to know who it is. Only one person could do this to the room. Jeez, good morning, Megalikun! <laughs> Sup, four eyes? You're especially, well, you looking especially like a punk ass bitch today. I don't think he said that in the translation I was reading a while ago. Okay, sure, man. <laughs> He's like, okay. Yep, only him. A delinquent with little respect for the sanctity of our school. Hey, man. I'm talking to you. I'm actually here before noon for once. You can't even give me a good morning. You gotta be happy I even bothered to show up. Yeah? And why should I? 
Your mug isn't exactly easy on the eyes. <laughs> there isn't anything to be happy about anyways. It's not like I come to school just to see you. <laughs> what? How's that fair, dude? I come to school to see you. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Sometimes, I wonder why we're even friends. He has a dyed head of orange hair and piercings in his ears, sporting a perpetual scowl that particularly is begging for a fight. He seems to follow the delinquent dress code to a T. Though his brand of counterculture may seem a little bit out of style, but he still looks like the he still looks the part of a good punk. His name? Arihiko Inoi. Is it Inoi or Ino uh, No, yeah, Inoi. Or no, Inu Inui? I think the one of the two. Inoi or Inui? What's well, Inu? So Inui. Inoi. I don't fucking know. Whatever, man. It's just good you're in class at least. Oh, wait, shut the shaking. I'm talking about. Morning, Art Hiko. Are those absences finally catching up to you? Yeah, so <laughs> that face while he says that. Nah, I'm not too worried about that. I still got plenty of wiggle room. Uh, my sister's at home today, so I can't skip today at all. Or, I can't skip today at all. <laughs> I was playing Mahjong all night, and it really did a number on me. My body is already at its limit. Uh-huh. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Good night, Trash Hiko. I don't sleep at your desk already. Man, that's cold. As your bitter, uh, as your, uh, what? As your bitter middle school rival, can't they at least admit I'm more than that? Oh, or you're trash too. Really? And now tell me, how are we rivals? Anyway, you can find a partner in crime loitering in town. Just leave me out of it. He does still owe me a bunch of money I lent back uh, I lent him back in middle school, which makes him more of a moocher than a rival. Why are the only one you ever pick on, huh? Let the goddamn Pope when you're talking to other people. How's that fair? Violence aren't get it, huh? Life isn't fair. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. But aren't you especially an ass to me? Arihiko lets out an exaggerated sigh. I don't mean to uh, treat him any certain way. Everything's just naturally ended up this way after years of, I guess, unfiltered treatment. We may have completely different interests and tastes, but we seem to operate on a similar wavelength. <laughs> well? Ignore the fact you uh, that you've run away from home. I'm surprised that not an owl like you can even show up so early. You sure you're feeling okay? Yeah. Oh, you're telling me. Ooh, apologize for yawning. Uh, I woke up early anyways, so I figured I'd at least show up, but I'm already itching to bail. I guess there's no point coming in if you ain't willing to work. Ah, he's not wrong. But when he come, but when he says, but when he says it like that, it sounds, it almost sounds like he wants an award for just making the trip to school. Uh, 
なんで街に行かないかってことカラオケでも漫画喫茶でも時間潰すならそっちのがいいんじゃない Maybe you should try reciting this stuff to a mirror next time. How come you didn't go into town? Wouldn't you have been better off lazing about at a karaoke bar or a manga cafe? Sorry, manga for those people. You know who you are. Yeah, but you know, all that shit's been going down lately. Plus, I don't want to be caught with my pants down when I'm not at all 100%, you feel? Nothing isn't going down? Yeah. Haven't you heard? The serial killer that's been making rounds like they own the place. Cos been all over the town at night looking for him. Right, I think I remember hearing about that. Hearing Arihiko talk about it reminds me. The going odds in Suya hadn't bothered me while I was living several stations away with the Ari and my family. It was all over the news. I seem to remember. What was it that they were calling it? It was something tacky. The Soya Slasher? They're saying it's some super freaky serial killer. Most of the victims are young women, with the one found the other day making the eighth victim. Each one apparently having an X carved into their throat. Oh, like Victor Zaz from the DC Universe? That's crazy. Weird. My mind can't even picture something like that. That's not right, Inoi. I've heard all the victims were completely drained of their blood. And there she is. There's best girl, Satsuki. I fucking French bread. If you, for some reason, have somehow found me on this platform, please add her to Melty Blood. I've been asking for this shit since they fucking... Since Melty Blood type Lumina was revealed, I want Satsuki in this fucking game, dude. I want her in Melty Blood so bad. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, if you don't know, she's like my main and uh an actress again. Uh act current code actress again. Why that's such a long title, have no clue, but you know, that's French bread. But Yumizuka pokes her head around, uh her head out and corrects us, luckily drawn by how loud we were. Yeah, that's right. Or no, yeah, that's it. The headline called them a modern day vampire or something like that. Thank you, Yumizuka. Thanks, Yumizuka. And morning. Good morning, Inoi. Good morning, Inoi. Good morning, Inoi. Good morning, Inoi. Apparently, the wounds left behind、uh, differ from person to person. Some bodies come out completely unscathed, while others are horribly mangled, I think. Yeah, you're pretty knowledgeable about this, Yumizuka. <laughs> Not at all. It's just not hard to see it everywhere when it's happening in our own backyard. Well, you heard it, Tono. Yeah, I'm not crazy enough to go walking around town when there's a serial killer around. I just spent the last few nights chilling at my place. Ah, so that's your reason? I'm kind of surprised it's a half decent one. It's not like you to hide away afraid in your house. Even I'm afraid of a murderer. 
I ain't that stupid. I've got no interest fighting someone really out for blood, especially if they ain't gonna do it fair and square. I still got a lot of living left to do. Fair enough. Guess you have no chance but to fight them off if they manage to corner you. You do know running away is an option, right? Why in the hell would I try to fight them? Hmm? I thought running away isn't an option in those type of situations. Never mind, it's my fault for asking. I'm not, uh, I'm not that worried about it. Getting caught by someone just like, uh, like that just means your luck's run out. What, uh, what they would call it on the news? An act of God or something? But I have a, but I've got a real reason for not going out though. A bunch of fools been hanging, uh, been hanging around the north uh, exit of the station. I really don't want to deal with them. The north exit, locating the opposite side of the station from the business district in downtown Soya, a bustling hub that never sleeps. Arihiko lives on the north side of the station himself. These fools must be pretty bad if he's going to such length to avoid them. Know about it, Tano? Some kind of weird dare. They say you'll come into a bunch of money if you enter the underground using a secret entrance and make it to the end. I've heard about that too. Isn't it just some urban legend? Yeah, I hear it's been a, uh, I hear it's what I hear it's been around for a while. Sort of more given a ship book, she started the real still bugger on my own dial. Doc got a nagare to get a shins and monoka shinnega. Oka get a kitaguchino cookie no waters of a sharing in a runway. Chot to stack to the nagri aga has murder. Now they got some idiots believing that this is their chance to get rich. No idea where they came from. But they're seriously killing the vibe. Doesn't take much to set them off. I don't want to get into it, you know. The cops should do something about them soon, so I'm just staying at my place until things blow over. An urban legend on the north side of the station. I guess I hadn't heard it since I don't live nearby. Though... I suppose it's my problem too, starting today. <laughs> what? Not exciting enough? <laughs> Did I pass off from that anemia thing? Nah, I feel okay today. I appreciate you worrying, but I'm pretty sure I'd be dead if I was anemic all the time. What the fuck was anemia again? I should know this, I'm a fucking pharmacy technician. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. If you say you're alright, I'm sure you're fine. Oh, okay, just blood, uh, the body doesn't have enough uh, healthy red blood cells. Oh no, that's funny. There's a reason why I laughed at that. That was a joke in a video I saw. Yeah, class is about to start. You better get back to your seat. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, by the way, I'll be eating in the cafeteria today. I got a very special guest coming. Looking forward to it. 
Harahiko laughs suspiciously if he's, as he saunters back to his seat. I'll talk to you later, Tono. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, sorry to drag you into this, Yumizuka. Please. French bread. Add her to melty blood. That's all I'm, that's all I'm asking for. Bro. That's all I'm asking for. That's all I'm asking for. She walks back to her desk, her footsteps light as a feather. Five minutes after the bell for the homeroom, our teacher hasn't appeared. Just as homeroom is about to end, the teacher next door drops by us to tell us that Mrs. Toyama won't be coming today. Yes! No math class today! Someone sounds like they just won the lottery. Miss Toyama is our math teacher. With her absent, we'll, uh, we'll have uh, free study instead. Once you finish the worksheet you're given, you're free to spend the rest of the time however you want. Some use this to, uh, some use this time to study, while others just kill time. I started my worksheet. I actually have no problem with studying. I quit going to after school lessons as a child, but that was after I was told getting into a good school would be impossible for someone with my condition. Whether you choose to go to college or straight into a workforce, knowledge is never a bad thing to have. I raise my head after solving a few problems and look over to the students near the hallway. I can only hear bits and pieces of their conversation, sitting as far away from them as I, as I am. So it's true. I don't believe it. Yeah, this morning. I saw the teachers running around the faculty room looking really freaked out. Look, it's just a rumor. But could she really... It's terrible. How could something like this... Okay, uh, slight, because they're going to say it anyways, but uh, teacher was killed. Yeah, so that's what happened. That's the whole commotion. Their teacher was killed. One of the victims was the teacher. I believe the, the recent victim, too. Something certainly feels wrong, I think. Knitting my eyebrows. That murder last night. I saw two guys who looked like detectives go into the principal's office. I brace myself for what's coming. As familiar as I am with this feeling, I feel myself not wanting to accept it. I hold my breath in anticipation for the worst to come. I heard Miss Toyama died last night. I close my eyes, trying to hold back a headache. The morning passes without, uh, without the rumor about Mrs. Toyama spreading much further. The classroom is a mess now that it's lunch. Some go to the cafeteria, others to the courtyard, while uh, others, uh, well, what? While still others stay in the room and open their lunches at their desks. What should I do for lunch? Okay. We got one, meet, uh, number one, I'll meet up with Arihiko in the cafeteria. Number two, I'll stay in the classroom. And number three, I'll go into the hallway for now. Uh, I kind of know what this one is from when I, the last time I played this. Uh, so I actually kind of want to switch up what I what I go with. Uh, let's see, stay in the classroom. I'll go up for the hallway now. Let's stay in the classroom. Let's stay in the classroom. We'll stay in the classroom. I guess I'll stay in the classroom. Yeah, I'm just gonna fucking blow off Arihiko. <laughs> like, I'm not going to the fucking... I'm not going to the goddamn fucking cafeteria, dog. I can't work up the energy to move. Wow, my voice sounded weird there. I know the value of a full stomach. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't hungry. But I just don't have the appetite for anything right now. I vaguely remember Arihiko mentioning something earlier, but I'll worry about that later. Right now, all I want to do is sit in my chair and save my energy. Oh good, you're still here. Hmm? I hear a familiar voice close by. I look behind me to see who the voice belongs to. Ooh, best girl. 
No, fuck that guy. <laughs> you didn't go with Anoi to the classroom. Uh, to the to the classroom. To the cafeteria, huh? I almost went to look for you. I'm not feeling very hungry. Anyway, what's up, Yumizuka? Must be something pretty important if you're looking for me. Yumizuka may be the maybe a classmate of mine, but we're not exactly what I call friends. We sometimes banter when Arihiko's around, like uh, like this morning, but almost never one on one. Uh, one, -on -one. The only explanation is that she's has something urgent that she needs my help with. Well, I could see why you think that. Yumizuka looks like uh, looks to the side awkwardly, but only for a moment. Then she quickly returns to her usual cheery self. Mr. Habano was looking for you. He said he wants to talk to you about your living situation. Hmm. He must be talking about my move. Mr. Habano is in charge of the second years. It's probably because Miss Toyama isn't around to sort things out for me. Thanks. I'll go right away. Hmm, that's weird. Though I thought I finished all my paperwork and stuff yesterday. I forced my tired body to stand up. Yumizuka continues to stand there looking at me. <laughs> Do you have anything else to tell me? Huh? No, nothing else. Yeah, just know that for some reason, every female in this damn fucking story has a crush or something like akin to that on Shiki. Be prepared for that. I wonder if she isn't feeling well. Satsuki Yumizuka is one of the pillars of our classroom. She's bright, easy to get along with, and a hard worker. You know, we can see how much she cares about the people around her. A lot of you guys love her, and I don't have any. What? And I don't think any of the girls talk about her. Talk bad about her. I mean, it's only natural that she's always surrounded by people. She's the opposite of a killjoy like me. Even though we're in the same class this year, we barely talked. I didn't even think when she remembered my name, to be honest. Uh, can I ask you something, Tono? Yeah. Uh, sure, what is it? I don't want to pry or anything. You mentioned moving. Are you moving away, like transferring schools? Ah. It makes sense that she'd ask. Though she seems to have misunderstood things. Nah, just moving houses. I'll still be in Soya, so nothing big like that. I like it here a lot. I wouldn't want to move schools. Yeah, totally. We studied so hard to get here, it'd be sad to go somewhere else. I know I studied like crazy. Who knew? I'd assume that Yumizuka could have gone to any school she wanted with her brains. Mm. Oh, but if you're moving, does that mean you're moving out of the Arima's house? Yeah, that's right. It's sad saying goodbye, but they've already been taking care of me for so... Wait a second. I don't think I've told anyone at school about me staying with the Arimas. What, the Arimas? <laughs> I don't think I told anyone about... Uh, at, what? Damn, hold on. 
don't think I've told anyone at school about staying with the Arima family other than Arihiko. Uh, sorry, did I tell you about that stuff? Who else would tell me? Though it's been a long time since we talked about it. So they thought we've been well, we've known each other since first year, man. <laughs> huh. I guess I... I must have really been struggling for something to talk about. I can't remember the conversation, but... If we weren't talking about, if we were talking alone like this, it's possible I've, I was, well, I was desperate, I was desperate for a topic and let it slip. Let me get some water real quick. I should probably get going. Mr. Habano is in the faculty room, right? Yep. He said you better be there in 10 minutes, or he'll dock your grades. He says that a lot, but I always wonder what he'd actually dock. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Uh huh. Yumizuka giggles without, with, without a hint of sarcasm or scorn. I can't help but laugh alongside her. Mr. Habano is notorious for threatening to dock grades, but I doubt he actually do that to someone just for being late. <laughs> By the way, what are you doing for lunch? I'm about to talk to Mr. Hobbin. I was exactly what I'm about to do for lunch. Uh, I'll probably drop by the cafeteria after going to the faculty room. Arihiko should be uh, should be there. Uh, gotcha. Talk to you later, Tono. Yumizuka waves awkwardly and goes back to her group of girlfriends. I head over to the cafeteria after getting a grilling by Mr. Habano about my relation to the Tono family. I'm their son, duh. Duh. <laughs> it's as busy as always in the cafeteria today. It may not be full, but most tables are packed with students. Almost a third of the student body uses this facility, while other students who want to save a few bucks use the school store. I gaze at the students waiting with their order receipts in hand as I make my way to the table. So, who's the special guest you're talking about? Uh, she hasn't shown up yet. We'd said we meet up in the cafeteria. Let me go see what's up. Arihiko hurries out of the cafeteria, leaving his curry udon behind. Hmm. I've ordered a uh, Chikara Udon for myself. What the hell is Chikara? I hope he gets back before my noodles get soggy. Ah, no good. Can't find her anywhere. Who was it anyways? Like we're, we're no, I think we know where this is going. <laughs> A third year. I've been trying to get her to have lunch with me for a while and finally got got her to agree. Sounds like something came up and she's been having to run around a bunch. Sounds like quite the busy person. Ah, she sure's got a lot of iron in the fire. A lot of irons in the fire. I don't think she's ever stopped moving. Arihiko breaks apart his disposable chopsticks, looking dejected. Oh well, too bad. Let's eat. Yeah, sounds good. We both dig into our udon. A lot of irons in the fire. What a strange way to describe someone. Suffice to say, that's, that my curiosity has been piqued. But I'll ask him more about that later. I don't know, irons, a lot of irons in the fire, that makes sense, like, if you think about it like as a bladesmith, 
or blacksmith, I should say. Uh, you know how like they have like the, you know, you know like the just like the the raw iron that they have that they shape into like you know blades or other thing like that. It would make sense that she like to have just a shit ton in there to work with, like as you're working. So basically saying she's just moving from work to work. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's a that's actually a pretty neat saying. I've never heard of it till now. I don't even know if that's an actual saying. Maybe in Japan, but not here in America. Yeah. So, what's the deal? Deal about what? Why were you in a classroom so early? It can't be because of Ichiko. I know she works during the day. I asked Arihiko to sort my Chikara noodle, or udon. Ichiko's Ariha uh, Arihiko's older sister. Well, let me look at what Chikara is. What the fuck is that? I got Chikara Professional Wrestling. That's what I got. <laughs> That's what I got. That, there's an instrument. Let me put food real quick. Sorry if I'm not being professional. Okay, forget it. Uh, older sister who works full time. She's a bit of a mystery, but she's always been taking good care of us. Just udon chop topped with mochi. Cool. <laughs> ah, you knew, huh? Well, uh. You're heading back to your old place today, right? Yeah. Did I tell you about that? Nope. Heard about it from my sister. Just want to make sure you weren't like going all emo or something over it. Oh? And how'd that turn out for you? Oh, well, it wasn't worth waking up early, that's for damn sure. Nah, sorry, my struggles aren't entertaining enough for you. You really have too much on your hands, you know that? That's why I love some good gossip. You've been with the army since elementary, right? Hmm. It's been seven years already. What's your old man thinking? Bringing, back, uh, bringing you back after disowning you for so long. I wasn't technically disowned. I was just told to leave the manor for no reason in particular. That sounds like, you know. You know, man, usually a family kicking out their own kid out of their home for no reason wouldn't be so sad it's funny. But that so cold, I can't even laugh about it. Arihiko laughs in an exaggerated manner. The way Arihiko never takes anything seriously is one of his best qualities. The truth is, my father and I had been on bad terms long before the car accident and hospitalization. The Tunnel family is a distinguished household dating back centuries, with customs very different to those of a regular family. My childhood memories are of an enormous, enormous old house and the impressive Antiquated practices of the family within. Did I say that right? Antiquated? Sure. Ant anti yeah, that would make sense. The Tono family is wealthy, with shares in a wide variety of companies. My father, Makihisa Tono, wasn't much of a businessman, but the assets of he inherited from my grandfather were more than enough to help his businesses make a fortune. A mansion from another era. A high-class lifestyle that valued history and decorum. Any child would have found this life in the mansion 
unbearably dull. So when I was told to go live with the Armas, I had no qualms about leaving with my leaving my real family behind. Technically, they're not your real real family, but sure. I think it was the best outcome I could have asked for. I got along with the Aramas. Uh, Keiko and uh, uh, Fumiomi treated me no differently than if I had been their child by birth. I always wanted to be a part of a normal family. I love what the Aramas gave me that opportunity. I don't have any regrets there. With no one except my sister, Akia. She's a year younger than me, and I left her behind at the Tono Manor. I wonder if Akia resents me. I mean, why wouldn't she? I loved her in that giant lonesome house with no one for her company than that pig-headed old man. It's not hard to imagine what Akia thinks of me, of the brother who ran away from it all. So, that's yeah, getting kicked out of my house for no reason. Not much to do about that, but laugh. Right. And considering that they, uh, that they told you to never step foot in there again, that sure sounds like you got disowned to me. Why did you get disowned? Anyway, I never asked. Yeah. I don't have a good answer for it myself. I think in the end, my it may have just been a lot of unfortunate coincidences. I was unlucky. Well, if you don't want to talk about it, that's cool. Are you... Are you... What? I have to end this uh, pretty quickly. Goddamn, my voice is starting to... My throat's starting to... What's it call him in here? Ariko pick us, uh, picks up his bowl with both hands and drinks down the broth. Lunch always feels so short. I follow Arihiko's example and quickly down the rest of my food. Perfect. We're back in the classroom. And with that... Oh, all right. Let's see. Hold on. School comes to an end for the day. And with that, that's where we're going to end ourselves. We're going to save. Press that a bunch. Get out of that. And then we're just going to do another quick save here. Well, there we go. There we go. We got to meet homegirl CL. We got to meet the girl herself, Satsuki. And we got to meet the homeboy, Arihiko, which is pretty cool. Uh, I will say out of the three choices, there's if you go to the hallway, you do actually meet Noelle. Uh, didn't want to do that. I wanted to switch it up because I kind of, again, I kind of already knew uh, what was going to happen when if I picked that one. So I just decided to just, just switch it up. So. All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be it for today's video. It has been your boy, White Album. And if you enjoyed today's video, like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys more with some more Suki Hime. As always, take care.